So now that we've surveyed a variety of castles and grand estates, are you feeling a bit of palace intrigue? Well, if you've got a spare 23 mil stashed away somewhere, we've got the property for you. Juggler Meadow, a massive estate in Leverett, Massachusetts, near Amherst, though it's not technically a castle. This has a couple castles. You have nine castles here. Johnny Haddam of Douglas Elliman Real Estate is listing agent for the 60-acre property, which features a spectacular country manor, a resort-style pool and clubhouse, a bowling alley, a concert venue that's hosted the Doobie Brothers and Hall and & Oates, an Adirondack-style wilderness lodge, indoor tennis and basketball courts. And this hoop comes straight from the Boston Garden. But wait, there's more. An 80-car garage, a two-story arcade, even an indoor water park featuring three waterfalls and water slide, nine buildings with an astounding 120,000 square feet of living space. It's like a resort, but at the same time, it's like a town in itself. And not only that, it's a home, Indeed, it is. Mike Kittredge grew up here. It was a magical, magical time, magical place, and um, it's, it's a dream waking up in it every day. Mike is the son of the late Michael Kittredge II, founder of Yankee Candle. The estate was his father's pride and joy. He was a huge entertainer. I mean, this place was built because of his friends. He always wanted people around. He was always having people over. And he wanted to build lots of different spaces so that it never gets boring. The gracious main house features exquisite craftsmanship, as well as the elder Kittredge's irreverent sense of humor. As this is really a reflection of who he was. But the sheer scale of Juggler Meadow is almost impossible to take in. There's eight sinks here and five islands, which is incredible. But it's all a bit much to, well, juggle for a young guy in his 30s. So Mike Kittredge has decided to put his father's dream world up for sale. My biggest wish is that it's just active with people and kids and, and it's really living what my father's dream was, having lots of people around, always having energy. That's really what I want for something a bit more modest in size. We really don't define this house by square footage, by number of bedrooms, number of baths, because the moment you walk in, you know it really defies all of that. A castle? Perhaps not, but this house in Ridgefield, Connecticut is a citadel of sorts, a sanctuary and a theater. The former home of the late Jim Steinman, the multiple Grammy award-winning composer of platinum hits by Meatloaf, Bonnie Tyler, and Celine Dion, among many others. Laura Ancona of Sotheby's International. This is the place where he made that magic happen, and I think it will take someone who's incredibly open-minded and you know fascinated with dimensions because this really is multi-dimensional, otherworldly, transformative. It's, it's not just a house. The home is being sold as is for four and a half million dollars, complete with Steinman's piano, furniture, and his cherished collection of German fine art. It really is the museum of Jim Steinman's mind. Everywhere you look, there isn't a detail in this house that wasn't influenced by Jim's desires to express himself. Jacqueline Dillon, a lifelong friend of Steinman's, served as his executive assistant for many years. Every light fixture, every bit of furniture, the color scheme, the paints, the hand-painted ceilings, this is all from his mind. Whoever ends up with this house is ending up with a, a bit of the artist's mind. All right, I just have to say, a two-bedroom house on the market for two and a half, four and a half million dollars does sound a little crazy. Four and a half million. When you factor in the artwork and the architecture, though, it makes, it makes a little bit more sense. And Jim's piano alone really is priceless. That's where he sat and he wrote such hits as Total Eclipse of the Heart for Bonnie good, Tyler, good <laughs> uh, Meatloaf's entire album, Bad Out of Hell. So, yeah, there's a lot of history there and there's a lot of priceless art and architecture. Well said. All right, <laughs> still ahead, a bit of Broadway in the New Hampshire world. Woods.